Hi everyone, I'm Dan Rowe and I'm Maritime Geothermal's lead product engineer. Uh, today I'm going to show you our Nordic TF series unit. Uh, we've been making this model for many years, uh, and of course with lots of updates and improvements along the way. Uh, let's dive right in and take a look at it. Uh, first, the TF functions as a water to air heat pump, heating or cooling air for a forced air duct system. Uh, second, it functions as a water to water heat pump, heating water for a hydronic heating system, for example, in-floor heating. Uh, however, it can't do both at once, but the priority is selectable by the user or installer. Uh, the TF series uses R410A refrigerant and is available from a nominal three to six and a half ton size in left and right air return configurations. Uh, the TF is Energy Star rated. Uh, note that the largest size, the TF80, is a single speed compressor and for that reason doesn't have the Energy Star rating. I can switch to a CAD view here to see, let you see what the uh, unit looks like. Um, I'll go through some product uh, components and features here. Uh, for heat exchangers, uh, the loop side and indoor side water coils are selected based on performance from extensive testing with various water coils in our CSA certified performance testing facility. Uh, the selected water coils are also the toughest on the market with the best freeze resistance and best tolerance for solids in the water. Uh, water coils are available in Cooper Nickel as an option. On the outdoor side for open loop well water that is high in chlorine or salinity and on the indoor side for heating a residential pool for example. Uh, the air coil, which you can see here, is uh, designed by us and uh, with, a, of course, with a computerized software and custom manufactured with a uh, higher wall thickness than the competition to avoid the tubing failures you commonly see after several years in uh, competing units. Uh, it has a nozzle style distributor right here for best uh, cooling mode performance with a heating bypass check valve. And this is a feature, uh, again, not commonly seen on uh, geothermal units. Uh, the blower, uh, you can see here, is uh, of course a very important component. It moves air through the forced air system quietly and efficiently. The blower is full sized as opposed to the tight blower found on most competing units. And this means it spins slower for the same airflow, uh, resulting in less air noise. The blower can be changed from uh, top to side discharge in the field. Uh, I'll show you the, there's the side discharge position. Uh, and this is another uncommon feature among geothermal heat pumps. Uh, there's an electronically commutated blower motor, or ECM, uh, which maintains uh, constant airflow regardless of duct size or filter uh, condition. Uh, and this is more efficient than a PSC motor, especially at part load speeds. We're using the latest ECM release from uh, GE or Regal Beloit. It's called the Eon. And uh, here you can also see the position for the internal plenum heater, uh, which is available in a range of sizes for auxiliary or full backup electric heat. And that would be provided as an accessory. Okay, the compressor is a two-stage uh, Copeland uh, model, the Ultratech, which has become a standard in the geothermal industry. Let's see if I can show you a better view of that. Um, it's the, we use, the, of course, the newest uh, K5E version, which minimizes size and weight and maximizes efficiency. Um, the compressor is mounted with double grommet isolation for low noise, and an optional sound jacket is available uh, to reduce noise even further. You can see the compressor right there. Uh, here you can also see a uh, suction accumulator, which is standard for maximum protection against uh, liquid uh, flood back to the compressor which is a feature, again, uh, rarely found on this class of equipment. Um, the desuperheater to uh, produce domestic hot water when the unit is running uh, can also be seen here, at least the connections for it. Uh, this is a custom manufactured side-by-side -side tube double wall heat exchanger, and it results in about 5% uh, of the machine output being available for heating domestic hot water. It also has an ECM style circ pump, uh, which you can see here. Uh, which uses only a fraction of the power of conventional circ pumps. Um, There's some other line components I can mention. Uh, uh, 
they might sound familiar to those who work with geothermal heat pumps. There's a balanced port TXV uh, to control superheat regardless of operating conditions. Uh, it's got a reversing valve to provide uh, heating or cooling and a second similar valve to select uh, air or water heat. Uh, there's a sight glass, which is tucked away over there, uh, to monitor the uh, liquid line, and a filter dryer for moisture and particle removal. Uh, these are easily accessible, uh, as are the high and low pressure ports here for uh, easy service. Now the electrical box can swivel that back and take a better look at it. It's a, it's a large electrical box, uh, so it's easy to wire and service, and uh, it swings out to provide complete two-side access to the compressor. Uh, we use a non-proprietary thermostat interface, which means you can buy one of our several models of thermostat or use any other thermostat, actually. Um, the relay logic uh, has a call waiting feature. Uh, for example, if the uh, unit is operating in air priority uh, and air mode in only stage one, and a hydronic demand becomes active, the unit will switch to air mode stage two in order to satisfy the air demand as soon as possible and get to the waiting hydronic demand. That just means the, uh, the unit won't run in stage one while there's a call waiting. Okay, the uh, air filter is a, uh, there's a standard uh, pleated air filter, you can see here. Uh, with a passive electrostatic cleanable, cleanable filter uh, available as well as an accessory. Uh, for connections, uh, for the ground loop and indoor circ pumps, uh, they're connectable straight to the unit. Uh, note that a neutral wire for the main electrical service is only required if uh, 115 volt circ pumps are going to be used. Otherwise, you, you don't have to bother with that. Uh, there's a jumper wire uh, on the thermostat connection strip to convert to hydronic priority. Um, the aquastat uh, is required to act as a thermostat for a buffer tank, and this is sold as an, as an accessory. And of course, uh, you'll also need an air thermostat, just like with any water to air heat pump, a three heat, two cool uh, model is required. Um, <coughs> excuse me, just a note about sizing. Just like a regular geothermal heat pump, uh, a TF can be sized according to the heat load analysis for the building and it will deliver this heat either through water or air into the building. So there's no difference in the, uh, the selection procedure. And in the future, uh, you can look for a so-called Gen 2 version of this TF, uh, which would have electronic expansion valves, uh, outdoor reset, built-in aquastat, uh, onboard internet and backnet connections, and all the other Gen 2 features we've outlined in previous webcasts. Um, assuming there is an extra cost for these, uh, these extra Gen 2 features, I'd be interested in hearing whether people would prefer these features or uh, a slightly lower price. Sort of informal, informal poll. Uh, you can contact me at uh, dan at nordicghp.com. So to conclude, I think this Nordic TF series water to air uh, and water to water geothermal heat pump is the best you'll find on the market today although it's not really a common model, even amongst our competition. Uh, thanks for taking this tour with us. If you want to know more about our TF series heat pump, you can visit our website at nordicghp.com. You can connect with us on Twitter uh, at nordicghp or on Facebook at Nordic Heat Pumps. Uh, thank you for listening.